ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. Good evening. It is Sunday, the 23rd of August. It's eight o'clock. It's time for another edition of Mockdown. Hello, I'm Dave McClelland. As you saw in the intro, I've got three fantastic guests for you this week. Before I get to them, and well, they'll be here in a moment, let me just say that uh, this show, if you'd like to help out at all, there's a lot of artists are struggling at the moment. Uh, and so I'd just like to plug the Equity Benevolent Fund uh, they are helping out anybody in the creative uh, industries who are having difficulties during this time of global pandemic. Uh, there's a couple of links down below. There's the main Equity Benevolent Fund uh, website address. There's also the link for the Equity Benevolent Fund YouTube channel. And on that channel, there's a variety of famous people who've done monologues for you to have a look at. And there's also a very handy little button to click and donate. So if you'd like to help out, uh, it would really be appreciated by everybody who's who's having a hard time during this time of global pandemic. I know it's not easy for any of us, but there we go. Uh, anyway, on to my lovely guests. I have three of them, as I mentioned earlier, and we have, it's almost a bit of a Lancashire theme uh, from where they're from and where they are now. So let's bring them in. My first guest. Uh, let's get his picture up here. Uh, Tony Ordenshaw. Let me tell you about Tony. Attended Guildford School of Acting, uh, had a few years acting and directing theatre and education, and did multiple roles at Thorpe Park, a theme park in the summers. Um, then he went on, did a few pantos, Walden Coliseum, loads of commercials, led to bits on Brookside and parts in other popular telly, uh, and the films going off big time and Ken Loach's Raining Stones, and, of course, he's been playing Bob Hope in Emmerdale since two, 2000. That's 20 years. That's wonderful. Uh, he loves variety and light entertainment. Thrilled to do stars in their eyes twice. And we'll talk about that. And has appeared on the likes of Blankety Blank, Family Fortunes, Harry Hills, TV Burp, The Chase and Celebrity Mastermind. The Lucky Devil. Uh, he's been singing with the covers band White Van Man since 2001. He uh, contributes to the running podcast Marathon Talk. He's a keen bird watcher and helps run a weekly community quiz in his hometown in Derbyshire. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tony Ordenshaw. Hello. 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 How are you doing, sir? You well? I give it a seven out of ten today, Dave. A, a seven high seven. Yeah. Ah. Uh, I was out in Derbyshire, and maybe not too far from you today. I was in uh, the top of Mam Tor. Yeah. Was it windy? Windy and wet. The forecast and drizzle, it said. And the drizzle was nearly blowing me off the top of Mantor. It was absolutely bonkers. But uh, yeah. I've been out to... today as well looking, looking at the bearded vulture, which is this uh, bird that's flown over from the Alps. And it's the third yeah. time I've seen it now. That's It's near Glossop at the moment. When you come from the Alps, obviously the, the premier place to go on your holidays is Glossop. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Exactly. Moment. Uh, it, it is the place. Uh, well, we'll talk more about your bearded vulture and other things in just a moment. Let me bring in my next guest. The next guest is Fanny Compton. Let me tell you about Fanny now. Uh, I'm going to consult my paper list because I don't have an auto cue. Uh, Fanny uh, Compton is an actress, writer, social media creator of some note, and a recording artist based in the Northwest. Uh, her dreams of becoming a prima ballerina were dashed when she was told that her ankles were too weak. She then tried varying jobs, but it didn't take her long to realize that she was on the wrong path. And she graduated from the Mount View Academy of Theatre Arts in 2010. Since then, she's done hundreds of sketches and monologues for social media, started her uh, music career and has a television comedy pilot in post-production entitled Nowhere Close. And um, what I've seen of it looks interesting. Uh, she's made full use of the 2020 pandemic to develop an online sitcom called Lockdown Lifeline. Let's bring her in, ladies and gentlemen, Fanny Compton. 
<laughs> Where is she? There we go. Hi, Fanny. How are you? Um, overwhelmed by that introduction. I'm very uh, well, thank you. You write it, I read it. You know, you don't have to be that overwhelmed. Uh, but you know, if you write it, you could you could say absolutely anything. It's funny, funny. I I came uh, across uh, you. I think it was a link on a you know a friends thing. Uh, you started showing up in my social media feeds, uh, and I thought she's absolutely bonkers. And truly, you are. But how wonderfully bonkers it is, and the development that you have made from what you started off doing to what you're doing now is just incredible. I, I absolutely love it. And we're going to take a peek at a couple of those soon. So there we are. <laughs> Let me bring in my third and final guest, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry, Tony, I didn't send the applause when I brought you on. I can live with that, don't worry. It's there, it's there. I'm putting it back in now. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the studio audience, they, they just dropped off a little bit. I have to run an electric so buzzer. Special, uh, sort of yeah, special. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a little electric uh, ripple thing <laughs> under their seat. The next, my third and final guest is Mr. Dominic Rainford. Now, let me uh, bring up his photo here. And Dominic, uh, raised in Blackpool, he trained in musical theatre at the London School of Musical Theatre. And since then, he's had a varied career, going from pantomime to the English National Opera, Scooby-Doo to Shakespeare, Dungeon Creature to Drag Queen, and now he's swapped one tower for another as he's living and working in France at Disneyland Paris, or Paris even. Hello, Dominic, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. At the studio yeah, audience really appreciate that. I think oh, there's even a bit of cheering going on. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I, feel I know they're delighted. <laughs> Their oval team has finally kicked in. Oh, really? shut up, now. There we go. Uh, Dominic, you and I met in in a dungeon, didn't we? We did. Yeah. Uh, before anybody gets any ideas that this is something <laughs> awful and sordid, yes. uh, me me with somebody called Dom in a dungeon. Uh, <laughs> Dominic and I worked at the Blackpool Tower Dungeon in the early early days. Um, yeah, and uh, it was one of those things that you do, isn't it? Yeah, it was great. We got to create and open the the, the new attraction. So, yeah, yeah. It was really, good, uh, it, really interesting. I, I didn't last long, uh, to be honest with you, spending eight hours a day in the dark with screams of <laughs> you know torture and chains <laughs> dragging drove me absolutely bonkers but but there we go but lovely to have your housings in uh, in france at the moment they're okay they're they're getting better ish i hope but yeah yeah a similar cool. situation to england really so. yeah 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 lovely yeah. well let's do i i like to move on to what i call the this is your life kind of section of the uh, of the show now uh, and i'm going to go through you in order so let's let's move on to to tony first Tony, I have a variety of, of things uh, to to show you here. Uh, let me just move on uh, to another. Oh, my windows are all, all over the place here. here what are you doing here, Eamon? <laughs> <laughs> look, that's you working. Yeah, that's Graham Hawley. It's a, <laughs> yeah, look at that. <laughs> Julian uh, Allen. Looks like Tracy Rooney from behind that. Yeah, uh, but what's that doll that you're carrying? I'm assuming that's supposed to be a real life baby. The one of Bob's kids. Ah, <laughs> yeah. like Joe Ninety, I think, by the look of it. I know, I know. I remember Joe Ninety. Uh, yeah. it, it's fun. Uh, I don't know why, but yesterday I started singing a song, and you may remember this. Uh, T Terry Scott did it. My brother. Do you remember that song? Yeah. Who did? Did he? Oh, he did. Know. Yeah. My brother. Uh, anyway, I don't know why that you made me think of that, but uh, that's what came to mind just then. Uh, there you are on the TV Times. Uh, we're engaged. Yeah. Uh, you have wow. a lot of a lot of fun on Emmerdale, don't you? Yeah, it's brilliant. It's an absolutely brilliant place to work. I can't believe it. I mean, I went in twenty years ago for a few months with a character we didn't really know what they were going to do with. We didn't know if he was a bigamist or not. Yeah. And. Uh, I was sort of ready. I'd done a lot of little TV jobs, and I was sort of ready for a, a longer role in something. And, uh, yeah, 20 years later, I'm still there. It's, it's a great place to work. Well, you've done it, haven't you? You've, you've done it. Yeah, and, and I absolutely love it. They're, they're, they're wonderful people. 
uh, and it really is the the most heartwarming place to live. And I, the most recent one I did was the first time I worked in the in the village. Uh, other bits have been done outside, but that was the first time in the village. And it's just a magical place. You walk around it and think it, it's real. You know, it's absolutely marvelous. But look, I have a little a little snippet. I think that kind of. It, it doesn't encompass the whole emotional range of the things that you do uh, within. Both of them. Both, yeah, them, yeah, both of them. Emotional range. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> I, I think, you know, it, it does sum up Bob Hope. So let's have a look at it. <laughs> I absolutely love that. That's cruciating. Uh, I, I cannot mock you for that because I did once play a stripper in Emmerdale and it's a very short clip, but here we go. You don't have to me, just pick a spot and get changed. It sounds like a right bunch. Right, go on then, get yourself in there and shoot your pelvis and whatever else you've got stuffed in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God I've lost seven stones since that time. <laughs> Fabulous. Uh, but the things you do, I mean, it's just, you, you know. The things you do. I've stripped before on it. I just shaved me, uh, shaved me pubic hair off because they did a shot. They wanted to do a shot from behind. And I have, to, <laughs> I have this cut fitted because they could see my bum. Anyway, they ran out of time. So it never got used. That shot never got used, so I'd done it for no reason at all. It was itchy for weeks. The pain we go through for our art. You know, but that, that clip will exist somewhere on somebody's little memory card. Yeah, I, 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 did, a, I, yeah, I did a pilot for a TV show uh, with a bunch of the people from Emmerdale, funnily enough. Uh, and we were the worst football pub football team in, uh, in, in Yorkshire. And I did a whole scene uh, sitting wearing just my underpants and realized that everybody was pointing and laughing. And unfortunately, there was a dangler. <laughs> there was a loose tater. And uh, nobody told me. So there we go. <laughs> That's friendship that for is. you, isn't it? <laughs> but you do have something of uh, a history for clothes removal and I have a little bit of a another trip down memory lane for you here Tony if your man's more of a chunk than a hunk why not try him on some corn crunchy fillets they're low in fat and cholesterol free and they taste so good he won't even know how healthy they are like they say, it's not the man in your life, it's the life in your man. Get up! Get on up! Soap star comes clean. Can't I write the news instead of selling it? Of course you can. Baby, when I met you, there was peace unknown. I set out to get you with a fine tooth comb. I was soft inside. There was something going on. Wash down with one flat beer We talk about the weather cause it's always raining here With curtains shut and the TV on We'll cheer up on both sides In every pub the deputy club And sing this song with pride Wave a flag of red and white We are England We're skillful, courageous We're never giving up
Ah, there we go. What about that? What hey? about that? <laughs> well, that wasn't, <laughs> I can... that wasn't well put, Willie. That wasn't it. it. It wasn't those those clips. Let me just go through them. The first one was uh, was was the corn advert, and I made the mistake that all actors do. There's a free dinner, and I ate the free dinner, and thought this is fantastic. We'd not done the eating shots, and so straight after my dinner, I had to eat thirty of them corn steaks. <laughs> <laughs> that World Cup song it did as well as the team it cost about 100 quid to make and later on in it I bought a camera especially to do it like a proper you know proper camera and I dropped it oh no and I dropped it and we had hundreds of people at New Mills Football Club and it was in pieces and we sort of went just wait a minute we'll be alright and we went inside and we fixed it with gaffer tape the sound didn't work but it didn't matter because we didn't need any sound and then we came out again blushing and we got all the shots, and it was a brilliant experience locally. You know, it was ace. Amazing. And that last one there, that's the uh, that's so weird, because this was a thing that Emmerdale did, uh, Wolfpack Sessions. And my kids played instruments on that. And, you know, we do a bit of music together and that. But because of all sorts of rules and regs, they couldn't be seen. Yeah. And so they were off in the corner, sort of playing live, but you couldn't register them. And then I used to sing it in front of an audience, and all of a sudden I've got no audience. I'm singing to a camera, but they said, don't look at the camera. So it was like a really, a really awkward thing in the front room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Enjoyed it. Uh, uh, you're a bit like me. I, I'm in a couple of bands. And there's nothing quite like singing with a live band, though. Is yeah. it? You know, it's amazing. I, I, I've got tons of other clips of White Van Man, and, you know, where you're doing live gigs and stuff. And you're just having a great time. You know, it really is. You get up there and sing. We have a better time than the audience, certainly. <laughs> no, but we've had some great gigs over here. We played the Great North Run, which is obviously not, not going this year because of Corona. Um, but that's a fantastic gig. After the race, not many people dance because they're all too tired, but yeah, uh, you know, they're all well up for it. Everybody has a drink after off, and a lot of people haven't had a drink for a few months. And yeah. so it's a great atmosphere in there. We've played Winter Gardens in Blackpool and uh, the Albert Hall we've played you know quite a few times as part yeah. of charity gigs and uh it's, yeah, it's just a great thing. And the lads who we're with, and we've been together for 19 years now, and three of the lads are the original members. Wow. The drummer, his first gig was on Emmerdale in front of 10 million people. The last <laughs> drummer, and he came in, and it was for Viv and Bob's wedding, and they said, we want a band. And they went, you've got a band, haven't you? And so they came in as the Ringtone Five. <laughs> <one for them. laughs> but what a day. It was great to have my mates in work. It was magic, yeah, yeah. you know, and for them to see what you do, because they just think you go in and you dot around, you know, there was no, yeah. uh, what time we got to be in? Half past seven? You're joking, aren't you, you know? But there's free food, guys. There's free food. <laughs> free food, exactly, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, well, look, on lockdown, we talk about lockdown, of course, and lockdown for you meant no more filming of Emmerdale. But you moved on, didn't you? You created your, your own series i mean it was quite incredible this thing that you've done in the shed how did it all start what gave you the idea well it started uh well zoe henry who i know that you know we know you've worked with on emmerdale yeah. and jeff hordley uh, are really keen gardeners and they've got a fantastic allotment and i was before when it looked like we were going to close down i said to jeff i might get the old allotment going again and he gave me a few tips and said order these seeds and order these this is where you get them from and this is what you need and of course i didn't do it I and mean, then he couldn't get anything, could he? He couldn't no, get anything. No. So, so I cleared the whole allotment that hadn't been a, a garden for 10 years. It was a right mess, weeds everywhere. And then I went in the shed, which I've not been in for donkey's years, looking for seeds. And I found these seeds. And when I was in there, I just looked around and thought, wow, this place is amazing. It's just full of old bits and pieces. And I just shot a bit of video. And I thought, I've got this thing, the toilet of mystery, which is a... Uh, like a cabinet of curiosities, full of rubbish, basically. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And uh, I thought, well, what, what if I sort of explored these different items and went in the shed and did it because it's such a nice little set. And so I took this picture of a chimpanzee that somebody had lacquered to a piece of wood in there, and I just talked about it, and I made some music at the start, and I didn't know if I'd do any more than one. Yeah. And uh, I put it on my Twitter, and uh, yeah, you know, you people liked it. 20, 20 seconds long, that's all you can have. That's right, because it's 140 characters on Twitter. You've got 140 seconds. 
Yeah. Uh, which was fine for the first one. I didn't even read. I'd forgotten that. It just yeah. lasted that time, you know, and edited it yeah. together. And people like, so I did another one. And then I didn't really know how many I was going to do. Two, three, four. And ended up doing 46. I know. Well, Every day, me, one a day. Let me, I, I have that very first episode. And I've chosen this one because... I don't want to give the rest of the game away for anybody oh. who who should watch the whole series <laughs> because you have to watch the whole series because it is quite beautiful. So just give me a moment while I get to it. I've lost my uh, cursor. Here we go. Episode one in the shed. a lot of things in the shed. One of them is this photograph of a chimpanzee which is mounted on a piece of flyboard. I would say it's five inches by seven. And at quarter of an inch intervals or outer has serrated each of the four edges. The photograph, perhaps cut from a magazine, is placed centrally on the mounting. And then the whole thing is covered in a yacht varnish. On the back, there's a screwing eye loop, slightly off center. And below it is an inscription which reads, the chimpanzee is an intelligent and lively creature, showing an ability to learn as well as to act instinctively. Its behavior could well provide a clue to that of our early ancestors. I find it a very interesting piece and I'm glad I found it in the shed. God, I love it. There it is. I've not seen. I've not seen that for ages. So simple back then. Life yeah. was so simple. Well, the, oh. the thing is, you know, you, you watch it and you go, "What?" Yeah, it, it's Bob Mobile of, of Emmerdale, and he's like, "This, this item," <laughs> uh, uh, and you have these, and it's just it. By the time you get into the series, it's just it's nonstop. I, I was eagerly watching your Twitter feed, waiting for the next one. It was. It was driving me absolutely crazy. It was wonderful. Such lovely, the character is just is just wonderful. But the the detail, the 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 size of the plywood, the yacht varnish, yacht varnish made me laugh every time. It made me laugh again when I just watched it just now. But the thing is, you find so much stuff, and it, it's just so interesting. And then that zoom in at the end, that looks as though you're going to knock it off the shelf. It's just amazing. Well, it's, I mean, I, the thing is, the join join those those first forty six. I mean, I, I got to about twenty something, and I said to one of the lads in the band, I said, "Well, oh, I said it's become a bit of a chore, really, you know, <laughs> going to do this every day. I don't smoke. I smoke a pipe every time, you know. It's terrible." <laughs> and uh, he goes, "Oh, Tony he says it's all that's keeping me going." Yeah. <laughs> so I just kept go kept going, you know, and doing more. Um, but then, yeah, but, uh, it, it was very simple then. Yeah. The thing is, I mean, it. I I showed the first one because, I, uh, as I said, I would love people to watch the the whole series. But it develops along. But forty six comes out of left field, hits you in the solar plexus, and you reach for the tissues. I mean, it was it was the most moving two minutes and twenty seconds. It was it was absolutely glorious, and you know, I I don't know how you did that. It was. It was wonderful. It was wonderful for you to do. Do you want to say more about it? 
Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I lost my wife a few years ago. And, um, you know, when anybody who's lost a partner, you know, especially when you get on, um, will know, you know, what grief's like and, and how grief, um, basically, grief like lockdown all the time. All yeah. you do is trying to get through things all the time. You're just getting through stuff. And quite early on, after about four or five of them, you know, I remember that the last time, the reason the last time I went in there was to do in the wife, and that's what comes out in number 46. She gen that was a, it's a true story, and she genuinely used to send yeah. me down the shed in the yeah. middle of the week because doing something that she didn't want to do. Yeah. And uh, I thought the more I thought about it, and I was a bit worried about doing it, I didn't know if it was a bit mawkish, and I spoke to my daughter about it. And she goes, no, you know, mum would love that, you know. Yeah. Just do it. And so then, of course, it finished there. And I, as soon as I'd done it and I'd shot it, the beard came off. And I thought, that's it. I finished it. I never have to do any of those again. And yeah. then just New Mills Festival came along. And they've gone virtual this year. And some people who, who didn't have Twitter wanted to, to, to show them to the family and that and say, can yeah. you put them on YouTube? So I put them on YouTube and learned that you can – you can, you've got more than 140 seconds. So I've made exactly. five new ones and I've found a way of getting out of the last one. And these are longer. So they're not oh. two minutes, 20, they're longer. Uh, and it's, uh, the character's a little bit, you know, like, I don't know if you remember that show Hotel, I think it was called, but it's set in Torquay and there's a bloke who's a bit like Basil Faulty. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Series, because he knew, he played up to it just a little bit and it wasn't as good. And so I've sort of referenced that. I don't think these are quite as good because he's just playing up to it a little bit. And yeah. in each one for the locals for New Mills, I've put a little egg, which is a visual New Mills thing. But there's also something that people not from New Mills who don't know New Mills will not have a clue that it's a reference. But people in New Mills will all know it's a reference to the town as well. Yeah, I can't wait. And they're being released all through September, aren't they? Yeah, I'm doing it at, because you can do these YouTube premieres as well, which is something I've learned. So they're going out at nine o'clock every Wednesday in September and people can watch them together as a premiere and uh, we can chat about them and all that sort of thing. It's funny because yeah. I've got the others. I've not seen that for ages yet. These, I've, I've, I've kept watching them. You know, and the more you watch them, you think, I I'm completely lost from the objects now. And yet yeah. the detail on these objects, I learned so much about these things, but they were just too long. I had to cut them all down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, just just incredible. I love them. We'll we'll get back to you in a moment. Let me move on to my second guest, Fanny. Fanny, how are you? You also have been busy during lockdown, haven't you? Yes, yes, I I have. Yep, With tons of stuff. Now you you'd how how did you come to you? You became this huge social media presence on my feed. What kicked all of that off? How how did you get into that? Uh, you suddenly seem to be all over my Instagram, my Facebook, and my Twitter. <laughs> I apologise for that profusely. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't know. Cause obviously, I was working within the industry. You know, graduated um, from drama school and was, you know, ploughing through uh, as many actors do, trying to find the next job. And then um, I became. I make it sound like it came out of nowhere. Well, it, fe it felt like a little bit. But I became a single parent. Yeah. And, um, you know, I was feeling really um, detached from the acting industry. Um, and I, I couldn't go for as many auditions. Um, my time wasn't as available. I wasn't networking as much. And I started to feel really detached. Um, and I, I kind of started out, you know, putting things out on social media from that. And it kind of grew. I think the very first monologue that I put out was about suicide <laughs> uh, so and uh, yeah that gained a bit of traction and I thought oh you know oh people people kind of watch your stuff and then from there it just grew I was creating characters and you know storylines and all these different things and I just saw it as this platform for um, allowing me to sort of you know stay within the realm of acting whilst I maybe wasn't necessarily working I didn't want to disappear yeah you know? exactly. which is and why I, I do this yeah. show <laughs> and and more importantly I wanted to continue working on my craft yeah you know? exactly and, yeah and 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 so that's kind of where it was born from and, and, and you also moved into music as well now had music been part of your career prior to this because you're, you're creating your own songs your own videos everything now aren't you 
Um, yes, well, always, I'd always been a songwriter, but you know, um, I just I don't I don't know. I dreamt about being a pop star, but you know, who doesn't? I thought yeah. that's not going to actually work out. I'll be an actor instead. That's more feasible. <laughs> Um, uh, so um, I don't know, it was just always on the back burner and I'd written hundreds and hundreds of songs and poems, you know, I bloody love words. So um, yeah, and then I just thought, you know, I was a period of not working and I thought to hell with it. Why the hell are you not fulfilling and seeing through other dreams of yours? And I wanted to release music and I had this dream of people listening to it in their homes and in their cars and I thought, God damn it, just go and do it. So that the journey started and you know, yeah. recording studios and producing it and, and whatnot, all on a very tight budget. But god damn it, I got there and yeah. I still got further to go. But I yeah. have a little I have a little clip of one of your songs. Let's oh, have a god. quick look at this one. <laughs> no, we'll take your clothes off. You're no Tony Orden sure. Here we go. Love it, and all filmed in Blackpool on an iPhone. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> but you know it looks great, and you have some really lovely songs out there. And uh, down below uh, in the the comments and everything, and in the description for this, there's a link to your music site because you've got tons of stuff on there, haven't you? You know, it's it's really amazing what you've done. Uh, but during lockdown, you moved on to doing other things, and I'm. Uh, astounded at the cast that you were able to get for your lockdown lifeline how did all that come about what can i say <laughs> <laughs> um, i do you know it's, funny, it's obviously about networking but i think more than that is being fearless enough to ask yeah you know and approach these actors um you know, and I think a lot of actors are interested on getting on board with something creative, especially when they're on lockdown. Yeah. Um, you know, and they were seeing what I'd produced prior or what have you, and and that was it really. It's just asking and being brazen. And I really have approached some really big people. I've had no response, but I was saying, <laughs> yeah. you know, but, but yes, it's just about being fearless and saying, do you know what? You're right for the role. Is there anywhere I can interest you? And yeah. In part of this. Yeah. Well, uh, I know what one of my regular viewers keeps saying, can you get um, Sean Bean on here? And I've been trying to get Sean Bean on just for her <laughs> for some time. His agent has now said uh, he's very honoured to have been asked, but he, he can't, unfortunately. Right. So I tried. Vernon McPhee, <laughs> I tried. Uh, I have, though, the, the trailer for your Lockdown Lifeline series. So let's have a quick oh, look at no, that. Oh, no, all the bats. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> you look exactly like... That bloke from the office, yeah, yeah. I get that all the time, you know. Can't walk down the street without someone shouting out. Oi, Ricky, you prick. Self-isolation, self-isolation. Got me climbing the walls round here. Never been so lazy, feeling so crazy. I just want to disappear. Self-isolation, self-isolation. Got me climbing the walls round here. Never been so lazy, feeling so crazy. I just wanna disappear. Look you, I know it's not my brightest idea, but I seem to have a light bulb lodged in my rectum. Hey! The bloody hell you're doing in my garden! You see? Racism. Yeah, 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 yeah,
Whatever it is, the coronavirus, capitalism, they'll spread it equally with the entire world. That is, that's real communism, you know? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ! Oops. Great lads, the Chinese, great lads. Isolation. There's a cat just outside my house and it's stuck in a tree. But I don't think that that's actually an emergency, is it? But it's on fire. No, this is bullshit. It's in no, I'm angry. It's bullshit. <laughs> but it's on fire. I love that. So you got your dream cast and did they all do it themselves at home? Yes, everybody uh, recorded at home. I would like to say I think it's got a lot better since that uh, since that poll <laughs> has gone out, the production quality and, and whatnot. But um, yes. But yeah. You know what? It, it shows more nudity, obviously. Uh, and I'm surprised Tony wasn't approached to be in that one because obviously <laughs> he'd have been down to his uh, Union Jack shorts in a jiffy. Hey, episode ah, five. Ah. Ep episode five is casting soon. He's not safe yet. <laughs> <laughs> I need a thinner bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's wonderful. And, and you've got another. Uh, you, you actually have a sitcom it, that you're working on right now, post lockdown. Then. Yes, nowhere close. Uh, that's yeah. what the hope is to get commission. <laughs> or you know start start on that journey anyway um yeah but yes it's it's i'm sure as anyone knows who creates their own work from scratch it is the most it's obviously the most rewarding but also can be the most horrendous heartbreaking frustrating distressing expensive <sighs> just you know venture um yeah. and yeah you really have to want it to happen because it's so easy at any given opportunity to say, do you know what, I've had enough. There's so many issues that crop up every step of the way. Um, you didn't ask for any of this, did you? Um, so uh, you no. <laughs> but yes, it's in post-production and, you know, I aim to get it sort of premiered to uh, the people who were in it and possibly a few industry people and then to get it cut down further and put it in front of... Uh, yeah. It, it's never easy. I, I like to say I've done more pilots than somebody working at Manchester Airport, uh, and none of them have ever come to anything, I'm afraid. But, you know, there we go. I, I, mentioned, the speech. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I mentioned Verna McPhee. She said yes. I don't know why she's saying yes. I told her we can't have Sean Bean. He said no, Verna. He said no. But at least it's nice to know she's were, uh, watching tonight. And and Verna is uh, watching from Grenoble in France. And that is where you are, Dominic. Tell me about what mm -hmm. happened to lockdown to you. Yeah. Because we met uh, in Blackpool uh, in the dungeons, as we, we intimated earlier. And then your career took you to other places and quite different to dungeons, didn't it, really? Uh, yeah. Well, I was at the dungeon for just over a year and then after that i went to a very iconic uh show in blackpool funny girls um yeah. and i was there for three and a half years and yeah it was uh, amazing absolutely stunning I, I went to see shows that you were in a couple of times i think i have a, yeah, a very brief video clip uh because they did a they did uh, a, a little documentary about Funny Girls, didn't they? And I've I've gone through and, and picked some mm. bits where you feature more prominently. So here we go. Oh. Okay. Funny 
videos is all about. It's a bit tongue in cheek. It's a bit burlesque. And they are incredible shows there, aren't they, at, at Funny Girls? Mm, yeah, they really are. I mean, it's just just amazing. Amazing. Uh, absolutely love them. And the work that goes into it and, and seeing you there, the dancing that you're doing with heels on, I don't know how you can do it. <laughs> practice. A lot of practice. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, <laughs> now, I, I have some more some more photos here. Let me have a quick look at this one. Uh, this is This is from your dungeon days. Yeah, there we go. That Look was the at opening that day. That was when we terrorised the people of Bank Hay Street in Blackpool, and they didn't yeah. have a clue. They were all just out for an ice cream and a, a nice walk in the sunshine, and there we all came looking like that. It was funny. We used to have to uh, go out onto the street outside the dungeons and try and drag customers in, and, and mm. I seem to recall almost having stand-up fights with the uh, the statue men who were working across the street. Because yeah, we were very... interfering with their trade, and <laughs> and so very territorial. You've got a guy, you know, fully sprayed in silver, coming up and telling you to go away in no uncertain terms because <laughs> you you're messing with his trade. Because we were goofing around. Yeah, absolutely yeah. bonkers. Uh, mm -hmm. You did mention you you moved on uh, to uh, other things. There we go. Some more funny girls for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah, love this photo. As you do. Uh, look at that one. Lovely. Best chair. A whole variety of things there. Yeah. Look at those. That's fabulous. Look at those legs. Yeah. <laughs> but now, uh, what are you up to now? Tell boss. us where you are. Well, I'm working in Disneyland Paris. And I've been here for nearly four years now. And, yeah, and so I mean, it's for a lot of people in the industry, it is like the dream job, isn't it? Because it's it really is a place that yeah. has, you know, everything going for it. And, and what sort it, of, you know, in, in a week, what what sort of ro uh, roles may you cover during that time? You, you must do a, a whole host of things, really. Mm. Well, things are a little bit different now, unfortunately, because of the current situation, but before we would be doing daily parades there were shows i was um part of i was here i started in 2016 and then in 2017 disneyland paris celebrated its 25th anniversary yeah and so i was part of an anniversary show um for that which was incredible to be part of a such a historic um moment in the, the life of a disney park um, yeah yeah, so we do we cover all sorts of aspects of doing parade, and then we look after the the characters when they're out in their locations yeah. in the park and things like that. I, and I suppose for somebody who's in character, they they don't have to worry about wearing a mask, do they? <laughs> if you're one of the big costumes. <laughs> yeah. Are people returning to the park now? Mm. Yes. Yeah, they yeah. are. It's very safe. It's they've they've taken every precaution possible to make sure that it's a safe and welcoming environment yeah. for for people to to return to. Uh, yeah, yeah. That was me as a pirate. Yeah, that doesn't look like you when you look at the the funny girl photos. You know, it's <laughs> uh, Tony. Yeah, you you, you had to, yeah you had some days theme park related as well, didn't you? I like to think that we were the pioneers of Thought <laughs> Park. What are you saying about there, about going out uh, with, the, uh, with the characters when we started? Yeah, there we are with the Thought Park Rangers. You know, we're in those skins and we have no minders. So you just go out, uh, start the day and get leathered by cockneys. <laughs> oh, morning. They hit you on the back of the head. We used to have these fans. I don't know if the costumes have got fans in now. We had these fans in to try and keep you cool and somebody had crack you on the back of the head and two big D batteries have dropped down your back. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it was, you know, I love skin work. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely brilliant. And, and did, and these, these characters here, the Thought Park Rangers, um, they were just a joy and the kids absolutely loved them. 
you know, and I was there at the stage. I was lucky enough to be there when we gave them voices and I voiced them all and then sort of produced the shows for them. And so I love that sort of thing. It's just, uh, you've got people who want to be there and want to have a great time, haven't you? Yeah. Mm, yeah. The uh, joy uh, that uh, they bring that to was... people is, is really special to see. Yeah. I, 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 you know, it, it must be so frustrating for people who've, who've been booking their, uh, their trips to uh you know france and to disneyland and, and and to go there and to have it dashed by this whole coronavirus thing coronavirus <laughs> thing you know yeah. it must have been absolutely horrendous for them yeah i certainly would not like to be part of the reservation line that would have to deal with all the phone calls coming in and emails and things like that it must have been you know oh, a, a nightmare time for them go on tony can I just ask how they do with, with, the, with the costumes when they're in the skins? Because I know that back at Thorpe, you know, you'd have different people in the same skin during the day. Are they being sanitised in between or are they keeping one skin for one person? How does it work? There, it, there's a very rigorous cleaning process of yeah. everything across the park. So. Yeah, yeah. No, amazing, amazing. I've got, I've got another photo of you here. Let's have a quick look. That's one of the parades, is it? Yes, that's a Christmas parade. So I'm on the left-hand side, just yeah. on the, the second Next, area. Uh, second soldier in from the left. Mm -hmm. That's me. The other one looks like he's got a, a, a mask face. It's quite incredible how <laughs> I, I'm going to go full size on him. There we go. Whoa. Yeah, scary, scary. No, just amazing. I mean, uh, I'm so glad that things are returning to normal now. Were you able to get back to the UK during the whole lockdown fiasco? Yeah, I was. Luckily, I was here for I was here in France for about nine weeks um, once the parks closed because the lockdown in France was very severe. Like you, yeah, you really couldn't do anything. Like to the point where you couldn't go. A more than a kilometer away from your house without facing a 135 euro fine um, wow and you had to have um an attestation that you had to fill out if you went to the supermarket because there was only you could only go to the supermarket to a doctor's appointment um or to do jury service or something like that i think was one of the yeah, options yeah. or to go to work obviously if you were still needed to go to your place of work um yeah. so yeah it was very very severe um and then as things lifted towards the middle of may we still had no um indication of when the park would reopen so yeah i was able to return back to to england to eventually see family after a, a while so and i was back in england for about a similar amount of time about eight weeks or so do you get any idea of how the french actually view the brits and, and our lockdown situation? I'm not sure really what they... Well, they've currently done a um, a reciprocal quarantine because there is a quarantine now yeah, yeah. going back into England and they did that as that. So. Yeah, yeah. Bonkers. Tony, you've um, just been I, away, haven't you? I and really just... Know. You just beat quarantine back, didn't you? Yeah, got back in time. Yeah, crikey! <laughs> yeah, I know. changed our uh, changed our ferry back. Yeah, because that that it buggers everything up, doesn't it? You know, if you're away somewhere and well, you know, it's a moving situation, isn't it? So yeah, I think you know, anybody, anybody you know, I was reticent about going away. Really, I've got to be honest, uh, but I did. I still went, and you know, I went in a car, and you know, I like going running in the countryside, so we weren't around people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just kept an eye on it, and luckily we booked to come back a couple of days early, and it worked. Yeah, yeah. Uh, going back to the situation in France, my dear friend Vernon McPhee, going back to Sean Bean, says we will wear him down. And then <laughs> yeah. that question about you know how did the French view the the Brits? Dangerous question, she said. So I think I'm going to have to get Vernon on here as a guest sometime. Uh, get the uh, perspective from Grenoble. So we'll see how that goes. So what have you got coming up now? We're, we're you know, we're 
we're in that situation where things are easing now. How's it looking for you, Tony? What you you're back working on on Emmerdale and anything else coming up in the near future? No, yeah. I mean we went back to work. We were the first to go back to work. Um, yeah, yeah. I think you know now Nardi Mabadi because I think he was involved with that football thing that you did. He, he was indeed. He was it. indeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean him and the team, you know, and Jane and Laura and the, and the producers and Kate, a, a, a team of people got us back to work. We were two meters apart from each other all the time. Uh, we were the first back, which meant we didn't have a break in transmission. Other companies, the, the work had been fantastic. They've been so generous in sharing the blueprint with other TV companies like the syndicate. So I know that they're now back working again and they've got the industry moving. And I must say, being at work, it feels the safest place. They've thought of everything. You know, yeah. you go anywhere else, you think, oh, how are they, how are they doing that? You know, all the cutlery is together in one place. You know, oh, what? Well, you know, they can't do that because they've thought of absolutely everything. We're set yeah. into different areas called cohorts. So you turn up, you're not allowed to cross cohorts. So one crew stays in one place, very limited number of people, or your costumes are moved to you. Of course, we're doing our own makeup. Yeah. Um, so they've done brilliantly, really. We, we're really grateful to be working. It, it's funny now. You, you watch TV and you see people who are close together and you kind of get this little, oh, they're too close. It's an odd feeling, yeah. isn't it? We've, we've grown accustomed to it. It is. Well, we were halfway through a block when we finished, so we'd shot half of 12 episodes. And so we'd done half of them. When we went back three months later, we finished those. So the episodes, you know, in some of them, people were hugging each other, they were hitting each other, they were necking, you know, and then in the rest of the episodes, they weren't doing. So it was an uneasy mix, I think, at first. Yeah, but uh, you know, you've got but a lot of the time. I was talking to Duncan Foster last week, who's a fantastic director, uh, 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 you know, of the soaps of Corey and, and EastEnders uh, and, uh, and, and Emmerdale and that. And he yeah. was saying, actually, a lot of people don't stand between you know, closer than two meters anyway, and so yeah. actually, he very rarely has that. So it's not changed what he does much as far as it's affected us. There are fewer people in scenes, the scenes are longer, and you've got more lines, or you're dead quiet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That means more learning, though, doesn't it? It does. It's feast or famine, really. You know, I'm in at yeah. half seven in the morning, but that's it for me for the week. Whereas yeah, when yeah. I first came back, it was absolutely mad because you're picking up other people's stuff as well. These, these great long scenes, you know, it was it was really quite a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, we're totally addicted to to Emmerdale in our house, and uh, we sit there every night, watch it with the dogs. So there oh. we go. They love it. They lo Don't whistle. You'll set them off <laughs> yeah, again. <I> <laughs> Fanny, what about yourself? What What's shaking next for you? Well, I'm finishing off. I've still got a couple more episodes of Lockdown Lifeline to get through anyway, and I want to do a Christmas special. Um, and I'm obviously still working on the post-production of Nowhere Close as well. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's whatever comes in on top of that. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I'm still really busy, and I've got a few goals that I want to tick off. I want to get another song out this year and stuff. So, yeah. Well, it, lot it, yet. it is hard when you're doing it all yourself though isn't it you know i i find well, like like doing this you know uh, my, my research department is me my technical department is me yeah. my switching yeah. department is me uh and um uh, that's why i sometimes bluster around when my uh cursor moves off my screen okay. but it it it's the things we have to do we have to cope with it don't we really because it's a very different environment i think for most people in this business now uh, well yeah everything's geared towards creating your own work or being known out in that arena on the social media arena yeah and as much as i love that it's also it puts a lot of pressure on a lot more hard work you know and having to get yourself out there but yeah like you say you just have to do it yourself no one's going to do it for you are they yeah and, and unfortunately it's it's monetizing the whole thing isn't an easy job either is it because it's you know it's we, we want to get stuff out there and do things but actually making money from it is hellish well i think with anything you always start from a place of passion and if money yeah. follows awesome but you always start off from that place rather than yeah. thinking of monetary rewards but yes absolutely yeah. I, I i seem to have noticed such as yourself tony more more people, you know, who telefolk do seem to be more active on Twitter. They really seem to have quite a presence. You within the shed, uh, Charles Dale, who was in last week with his his poems and whatnot. 
uh, and I think a lot of people appreciate that. The, you know, familiar faces have helped them through what has been a difficult time for many. Yeah, I think whichever platform you're on, you know, it's a way of sharing directly with people, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and like Fanny was saying, you know, having total control of what you're doing is uh, it can be hard work, but at the same time, you have got control of it. And that's, I think, the thing when once you get something developed, you've got other people's hands on it and they want to get the finger yeah. in the pie, don't they? They want to tell you what to do. There's nothing better than you having every editorial decision about you know, about a project, it's absolutely brilliant. At the same time, you know, being part of a team is amazing. So yeah, it, it's yeah. great if you can have a bit of both, really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, John, what about yourself? Now, things must be gearing up, I suppose, I hate to say the Christmas word, but things must be gearing up towards Christmas now, getting ready for the whole mm. Christmas season. Yeah, and Halloween before that. So there's here, they're always... You know, a few months ahead, you end up rehearsing things for Halloween in the middle of August, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Christmas starts in sort of September. So, yeah, things are and and so on with, you with you'd be rehearsing all that stuff while you're still doing regular things as well. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, it's a bit like rep, really. You sort of do something different in the the daytime, you, then you always rehearsing, learning two or three different things at the same time so yeah yeah and when when you're seeing people coming back do their little hearts glow to be there yeah the magic is definitely still there it's it's different environment than it was before because all the characters are now socially distant from the guests and yeah things. but they're all they're all still there people can still see them they can still interact with them they just unfortunately can't hug them and get their autographs yeah. and things at the moment but yeah 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 hopefully it won't be too long uh, before things yeah you know, i know get back boris said it'd all be over by christmas you and loved <laughs> well <laughs> hold him to that <laughs> yeah <it's> indeed <laughs> yeah, yeah indeed he was in his tent so everything must be all right uh we're we're Ooh. closing on that witching hour i just want to uh mention uh if anybody wants to help out supporting the the old mock down show uh there are links down there if you want to chuck a couple of quid in or something like that to help out with that uh there's links down below for everybody's uh socials tony's twitter tony's in the shed fanny's music website fanny's youtube dominic's twitter it's all down there look them up there's some great stuff uh yeah there we go uh, <laughs> they always do that don't they dial there we go there we go uh thank you so much it's been lovely having you three on this e evening and i wish you all the best stay safe during all of this uh craziness wear a mask and uh take care have a lovely week let's bring the the crowd in again there we go we're going to the big titles stay online i'll have a brief chat with you afterwards hang on a second we're going to the big closing titles now. The big closing titles, so I can get to the right bit. Come on, where is it? I've got to find it. I can't find it. Hang on a second. There we go. No, I've got the wrong bit. Let me go to this bit. There we go. <laughs>